Thank you. Bless your heart. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, good. Thank you. Good. God bless you. Y'all all right? Say so, yeah. I've already enjoyed this. We're going to pray over this offering? This one and that one. That one and that one. Yeah. Do you believe God can multiply it? Yeah. Remember a little boy brought some loaves and some fishes? Yeah. And the people go, ah, this is not enough. Hey, anything you give to God is more than you think it is. Anything you give to God is more than you think it is. Remember that? What happened? God blessed it, break it, gave it to him. And what? Twelve baskets full. See, God is an abundant God. God does exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. So let's, let's, let's pray for this, okay? All righty. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you that you are El Shaddai. You're the God that does for us what we're incapable of doing for ourselves. I thank you, God, that you're more than we'll ever have need of. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. amen. Good. He really is. He really is. Well, we're glad to be here. I mean that. I'm glad to be here. Uh, this week I was over in uh, Seattle in a Russian church. Uh, this young man has uh, 300 and something thousand people hooked up on the internet. Just this young guy from Kiev. And so he's got a, a very aggressive church over in Seattle, Washington. And so we were there doing ministry. And there's a lady there. And uh, uh, I'd heard about her and hadn't been around her. But so this time uh, she was there. And the power of God came. She goes into a trance. When the power of God comes, she'll go into a trance. And um, gemstones will form in her mouth. And she'll spit them out. When I was there, she spit out number 64. 64 times uh, gemstones have come out of her mouth. So I asked her, I said, how does this happen? She said, I don't know. She said, the presence of God comes, and uh, I'm just uh, caught up, and God will show me things. And then she said, something forms in my mouth that feels like a gummy bear. You know what a little gummy bear is? And she said, in a moment, it gets hard. And she said, then I just spit it out. And the one she spit out uh, this week was number 64. So I said, Lord, tell me about that. He said, it's Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64, 1 says, get ready for a divine invasion. Yeah. Say divine invasion. Divine. Isaiah 64, verse 1 says, Oh Lord, rend the heavens and come down. When He comes down, things change. You believe that? It says, when He comes down, mountains shake. Now what are mountains? Mountains are what stands between you and what God wants you to get. So He's going to remove some mountains. You believe that? So Isaiah 64, 1, Oh Lord, rend the heavens and come down. When he comes down, the mountains shake. And then he says, when he comes down, he brings with him fire. And it says the fire does something. The fire burns the underbrush. Now, what's the underbrush? Have you ever tried to take a walk? Have you ever noticed when you're walking through the woods, uh, there, there's briars and bushes and brambles? Well, when the fire comes, it burns all that up. And he said, when he comes down, Isaiah 64, 1, he'll shake down the mountains and the fire will burn up the underbrush. Those things that impede our progress on our pathway to God. How many of you need that? God likes to do that. He likes to move out of, what, out of the way what's in the way. You remember that's Isaiah 40? He said, lower the mountains, fill in the valleys, pick up the stumbling stones, make a highway, make a, a smooth path to travel on. Don't you want a smooth path? God can do it. He can do it. So that's wonderful. And then he says one other thing, Isaiah 64, 1. He comes down, shakes the mountains down, burns up the underbrush. And then he says, the fire causes the water to boil. Now what in the world would that be? It means the Word of God's going to get on the, it, the Spirit of God's going to get on the Word of God. You believe there's churches that have the Word, but they're devoid of the Spirit? So the fire's going to come and cause the water to boil. Aren't you glad? I'll tell you, the, the water is wonderful, but the fire is wonderful. We need both, don't we? The dead letter does what? Kills. The Spirit gives life. So we need both. We need the water and the fire. You believe that? Yeah, that's true. We need it. We need it. I, I'll tell you what, it, it, it really goes together. So uh, I don't know how all that kind of stuff happens. I know that God puts gold teeth in people's mouth. Feathers fall. Six years ago, I was up there in Bethel, down with uh, Bill Johnson. Remember that? So six years ago, I was at Reading. And so I'm up there preaching one night. And I wheeled around and I stopped and I said to Bill, Hey, Bill, one day there'll be glory clouds in here raining down the glory of God. 
It's happened, for, it's happened 19 times. This past Sunday, Sunday it's two weeks ago now. Sunday two weeks ago, Bill got all the people in Reading, turned on the big screen, and he, gave, he, he showed the video of me prophesying that. And then he switched the video to when these glory clouds have been coming. They've had it appear 19 different times. Isn't that something? See, God can do all that kind of stuff. Well, I don't need that. Yeah, well, I don't know. I do. Early, early church had it. Mark 16, 20, they went everywhere and preached and God validated, vindicated with signs following. I believe in signs and wonders, don't you? God does a sign, we do the wonder, and we go, what the heck was that? Did you know I've been preaching 44 years and I've averaged speaking five times a week for 44 years? That's a lot of yak in it. 44 years, five times a week for 44 years. Now here's what I figured out. I figured out if you can figure it out, it ain't God. If you can figure out what's going on, it ain't God. Because the Bible said the natural mind receives not the things of the Spirit. It's foolishness to you. Neither can you grasp it. It has to be spiritually understood. You believe that? I don't care how bright you are. You can't comprehend the, the simplest thing from God. Not with the natural mind. You know what the Lord told me the other day? He said the most profound thing you can do is maintain simplicity. The most profound thing you can do is maintain simplicity. One of the quickest ways to spot religion is they always make hard, difficult, what God's made simple. you believe that? Yeah, they always make it complicated. I like what the Bible said. The Bible said the way of salvation is so simple that a wayfaring fool need not ear therein. The way of salvation is so simple a wayfaring fool need not ear therein. That's what the King James says. So I said, Lord, tell me that in a language I can understand. Yeah. And here's what he said. If you got enough sense to get back to your house, you got enough sense to get saved. See, a wayfaring fool need not ear therein. I'm telling you about salvation. Many people miss it because they tried to get their mind into it. Remember Nicodemus tried that. Remember that? Yeah. Nick came to Jesus at night. Remember that? We know you're a teacher come from God. Nobody can do what you're doing except God be with him. And what does Jesus say? You must be born again. What does Nick say? Huh? How can that happen? I got in the second time in mommy's belly and Jesus said marvel not which is a Greek word that says stop trying to use human power to understand spiritual things. Amen. Marvel not that I say unto you you must be born again. Being born again is not a suggestion. I was giving, a, I was giving a, an interview to a magazine one day and this lady said with a curl in her lip and kind of hostile spirit oh... Oh, you're one of those born again Christians. I said, her oh, is there any other kind? <laughs> See, there's no such thing as a Christian than a born again Christian. The only way you become a Christian is you must be born again. It's not a suggestion. Let me ask you this. Have you been born again? How do you know you've been born again? I'll tell you the only way to know is the Holy Spirit testifies to your spirit that you're a child of God. It's Romans 8 9 through 11. Romans 8, 9 through 11 says, If the Spirit that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead dwell not in you, you're not of His. That's what it says. And it says in Romans 8, uh, uh, 14, says, His Spirit will bear witness with our spirit that we are a child of God. Has the Holy Spirit testified to you that you belong to God? Now, I'll tell you what happens to you. Are we talking too fast? Oh, here's what happens. I'll slow down a little bit. When you get born again, God extracts out of you a cold, callous heart and implants in you a soft, teachable heart. Where's that in the Bible, Brother Bobby? Ezekiel 36, 26. It says, I will take out the stony heart. I'll give you a soft, teachable heart that can respond to my ways. Now, the Holy Spirit will be in us to be a guide for us. You believe that? Yes, Jesus, it's true. <laughs> it's Nehemiah 9.20. Nehemiah 9.20 says, You gave your good spirit to instruct us. You can't know anything about God apart from the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you what, I think you and I need a new appreciation of your Holy Spirit. He's the only God agent at work on this planet tonight. God the Father is where? Heaven, God the Son is where? 
seated at his right hand. Guess who's down here? God the Holy Spirit. Whoa, I'm telling you. Did you know I can't find one single miracle in the Bible Jesus did in the New Testament till he was filled with the Holy Spirit? He did get filled, didn't he? It says in Acts 10.38, God did something. Oh, he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. You can't have power without having the Holy Ghost. And you can't have the Holy Ghost without having power. It's true. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good. See, the Holy Spirit is on a mission to get you active in the kingdom. Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It's strange to me, remember the last time I played with that, but I would not do it now. Yeah. Remember, the Holy Spirit is in you for a purpose. He wants to cause you to be more like Jesus. The Holy Spirit really, really, really is real. You know, a lot of people think the Holy Ghost shows up in Acts 2, 1. Remember Acts chapter 2, verse 1. They were all in one place, one accord. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. Rushing mighty wind filled. Remember that? You know when Jesus shows up, not Acts 2, 1. Genesis 1, 2. Genesis 1, 2. It says, the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And it says, and the Spirit of God moved. Isn't that something? Yes. See, that's when the Holy Ghost showed up. Genesis 1, 2. And he's active and functioning all the way through the, the Bible. All the way through. Isn't that something? Yeah. He's the one that impregnated Mary. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah, well, I guess. Yeah, it is. <laughs> See, I'll tell you what. We'll not do one single thing beneficial for the kingdom unless the Holy Ghost does it. Nothing, not one single thing, not a single thing will be done that's lasting and beneficial for the kingdom of God unless the Holy Ghost does it. Amen. Remember what Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. Whoa, boy. Without me you can do nothing. Let's think about that for a moment. Without me you can do nothing. One time I was reading Ezekiel 44, 23. Ezekiel 44, 23 says this. Here's what Ezekiel 44, 23 says. It says this, it talks about the power of God. It said one of the things we're supposed to do is to teach the people of God the vast difference between the profane and the holy, the worthwhile and the worthless. One of our jobs as ministers is to teach the people of God the vast difference between the profane and the holy, the worthwhile and the worthless. So I thought to myself, if that's one of my missions and that's one of my commissions, I want to find out what did God mean when he said profane? Ezekiel 44, 23. Teach my people the vast difference between the profane and the holy, the worthwhile and the worthless. So I began to research the Hebrew word profane. Here's what it means. Empty, worthless, no eternal value. That's what it means. Anything we're doing that the Holy Spirit doesn't birth is empty and worthless. So, I was studying that and I thought, empty, worthless, no eternal value. And then Jesus Christ appeared to me and said, do you know my definition of profane? Instantly I knew I didn't. You know who's going to school when he asks a question, don't you? I mean, listen, he's out of the trunk. He came out three days, remember that? He's out and up, you remember that? Just to be quite honest, he's running the whole show now. By him, all things consist. Did you read the book of Colossians? Well, anyway, here's what he said. Do you know my definition of profane? I said, apparently not. I knew what the Greek said. I knew what the Hebrew said. Empty, worthless, no eternal value. Here's what he said it meant. He said, my definition of profane is this. You ready? Anything man is doing that God did not initiate. Empty, worthless, no real eternal value. Woo, Jesus meant it in Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33, remember that? But seek ye the kingdom. Look at them legs, man. Woo, what do you do? Climb mountains? Look at you. How are you? God bless your heart. What do you do? I'm a personal trainer. Oh, man. What do you think? Any hope? What do you think? Liposuction. Hey! Get off them waist, just get liposuction. 
them rednecks, they, they'll use a shop vac on you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. He, he, boy, he, he's a good advertisement for what he does, isn't he? Looks good. That's right. That's good. I'd throw a verse on him, but it'd be out of context. You know, bodily exercise profit little, you know, but we won't, we won't throw that on him. He looks too good for that. All right. It's going to be all right, you know. It's going to be all right, you know. God can do anything. Genesis eighteen fourteen. there's a question there. I love the Bible. It never asks a question without releasing an answer. Philosophy always raises a question, never gives the answer. Just pick whatever you want, whatever, whatever makes you feel good. Bible's not that way. The Bible never asks a question without releasing an answer. Genesis 18, 14 is a question. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? What's the answer to that? Luke 1, 37. Luke 1, 37. The Bible says, with men things are impossible, but with God nothing is impossible. He can do anything. Well, a couple of things he can't do. He can't lie and he can't fail. Impossible for God to lie, impossible for God to fail. That's what it says. That's what the Bible says. You believe it? It's true, Jesus. That was good. I enjoyed that. That was good. Oh, it's a lot of truth to it, isn't it? Oh, man. Yeah, boy. So, everybody okay? Yeah? Yeah? Brother Moyer's over there in Africa doing ministry. Lord bless him. I pray you'll send a wonderful anointing upon him. I pray you'll do wonderful signs and wonders there. I pray dead people will get raised. I pray, Lord Jesus, for the kingdom of God to move swiftly across that region. Lord, we thank you for this. Aren't you glad for the kingdom? The kingdom. Yeah, there's a verse in the Bible. Well, there's a bunch of them, actually. But uh, here's one. Revelations 1, 5, and 6. Revelations 1, 5, and 6 says, Now to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us to be kings and priests. Whoa! Old Testament, they couldn't do that. Couldn't be a king and a priest. But boy, Jesus does new things. New things. That's what the whole book of Hebrews is about. New things, better things, bigger things. So you can be a king and a priest. Isn't that something? You believe in angels, don't you? They're really, really real. And by uh, 2013, you'll know they're much realer than you think right now. I said by 2013, you'll believe that angels are much realer than you believe now. I know that's not good English, but it's good theology. God's about to send us heaven's heifers. And we're going to need them. They're ministering spirits sent down to aid us who are heirs of salvation. So salvation is going to start moving rapidly across the earth. Heaven's heifers are coming. I'll tell you what they're going to do if you'll listen. They're going to bring us higher wisdom. Higher wisdom. God's been trying to grow us up big enough to teach us things. If we're just sucking milk, we're just babes. But we need strong meat. Psalms 42 says, Deep is doing something. Calling to the deep. Don't you want to go deeper? Yes, yes sir. Uh, how deep can we go? It's the strangest thing with God. The way up is down. Yeah. Yeah. If you humble yourself, He'll exalt you. That's what it says. The Bible says, if you'll humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, He will exalt you. But if we have a job reversal, if I take on God's job of exalting Bobby, God has to take on Bobby's job of humbling. Who do you suspect can do the best job? So we, be, we need to learn how to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Now there's a difference between timidity and true humility. You believe that? I don't like timidity. That's a coward. No place for cowards in the kingdom. That's what it says. Proverbs 28.1 says, The righteous will be as bold as a lion. Said the wicked's running, nobody's chasing. Proverbs 28.1. I suspect our timidity is testimony to our carnality. What do you think? Yeah. We're supposed to be bold and brave, very courageous. Joshua 1.9. Yeah. Joshua 1.9. You want it? Joshua 1.9 says be, says, be bold, be brave, be very courageous. Go do what you're called to do because you're not going by yourself. 
He said, I'm with you. That's what gives us the victory. He's with us. That's right. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Who got in there with them? Jesus! He said, I like how God does his stuff. Right in the middle of the battle, God hollers time out and throws us a party. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Psalms 23, 5. He sets a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He anoints our head with oil. Our, see, that's victory. Right in the middle of the battle. See, we're fighting from victory, not for victory. That's true. A lot of them get to squealing over here. They stuff up here, man. I can't do that. I like this one. I'm telling you what, there's about to be an Indian uprising around here. Watch me. I'm prophesying to you now. About to be an Indian uprising here. I'm telling you, we can't go where we need to go by ourselves. We need the First Nations people. I'm here to tell you. And they're coming. They're on the way. That's true. I asked Jesus, I said, do you have a word for the First Nations people? And he pulled back a flaming arrow just like that. It's, it's boiling, flaming, and he let it go. He pulled it all the way back to his mouth, let it go. Whoosh! And I watched it go through the chest of a First Nations young person. All the way throughout the other side. And he said, I'm going to set their heart ablaze for the kingdom of God. And they get to keep their culture. That's what he said. Man, this thing looks like a mouse has been chewing on it. I guess the symbols. That's true. Well, I better put this stuff up. But I'm telling you, I'm prophesying to you. I'm telling you. That's right. To be honest, they's here for we was. They've got a they've got an authority over the land you don't have and I don't have. Yeah, well, we better hush. Well, it's gonna be okay. Well, I'll tell you. No, no, God's got protocol whether you like it or not. Well, I'll do whatever I want to. Well, not with God. See, I'm telling you about God. He can tweak you if he needs to. That's right. Remember Jonah? Go to Nineveh. Boom. Took off the other way. But I'll tell you about God. God can get you in a hammerlock. Three days in the belly of a whale. Finally, Jonah goes, you're right. Have you read about Jonah? Yes. Said he went to Nineveh. Have you read about the Ninevites? My God, no wonder he didn't want to go. They'd skin their enemies and choke the others to death with the skin off their enemy. I mean, that ain't good. They, okay, anyway. No wonder Jonah went the other way. But anyway, three days in the belly of the whale. God was tweaking him. Can you imagine three days? That's stubborn, isn't it? I mean, after the first big gulp, I'd have been thinking about changing <laughs> Three days, it said, seaweed over him. He said, down in the depths of, uh, de- depths of hell, he goes, three days, finally goes, okay. And he said, those whales swam up, and go, ah, threw him up. Now, I don't know all the scientific stuff, but I mean, three days in the belly of a whale, you don't look good. You lost your color, lost your hair, lost your clothes. I mean, you a, you a skinny white guy. That's what you are. All the pigment done ate out of your skin. No hair, no eyebrows. I mean, ears probably rotted off. You've been the gastric juice of a whale three days. It says he spit him out, and it says he was a sign to the Ninevites. You don't need much of a sermon when you got a sign like that. <laughs> Repent, yes! How would you like to have been one of those Ninevite fishermen that, that day out there? And you hear a little splash over there, and here's this naked guy. Repent! You go, yes! Said the whole city repented. That, that's something, isn't it? That's better than we're doing. The whole city. Isn't that crazy? Yep, he, he can get you in a hammerlock, can't he? It's true. Uh, 
Well, I, you know what God told me one day? He said, you better tell my people I'm not near as easy to get along with as some preachers have made me out to be. There's some crazy stuff out there about grace right now. I'll tell you what, don't believe anybody that tells you grace gives you a license to live loose. It's right the opposite. Grace binds you to love with love to God so your heart don't want to do wrong. But there's a license to live loose out there now. Oh, I'm a believer. I can do whatever I want. All the judgments are gone. Whoa, don't you buy into that. You can't prove that from the Bible. Oh, it sounds good. That's why we're in the book of Jude. We've got to earnestly contend for the faith which is once and once for all delivered. Because certain men have crept in teaching you. It doesn't matter how you live. Live however you want to. Well, I'm here to tell you it does matter how you live. Book of Titus said, The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world, looking for that blessed, open, glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, grace teaches us to look and live right. You believe that? Well, you know, there's some stuff out there. It is crazy. Well, there's no more judgment. All the judgment went away. You better read the Bible. Ananias and Sapphira missed the memo. Remember them? Drop dead in church. How you been doing? God really loves you. I remember the first time I ever saw you. He really loves you. Well, he loves us all, but uh, do you believe that he knows every bad thing we've ever done still loves us? Your friends won't. They find out some dirt on you. They'll distance themselves. But God sees you struggling. He'll draw near. Isn't that cool? It's really true. What's your name? Pearl. That's a wonderful name, Pearl. God bless you. Yes, he does. I'll tell you how much he's blessed you. We've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I tell you what, whether you believe it or not, we're translocational. We're here and there. Now, that'll mess with your mind. We're here and there. We're seated with him in heavenly places. But yet we're walking in this life. Paul said, I wasn't there, but I was there watching how you did your business. I don't know how that works, but that's something. I've been in two places at once. I can't explain it, but it happened. God bless you, Pearl. I want to rub you on the head. Is that okay? It'll be okay. God bless you. You go, what does that do? Well, it's going to release to her Philippians 4, 6 through 8, a tranquility of soul that's beyond anything she could imagine. Say it, tranquility of soul. That's what the Bible says. See, money can't buy it. I'll tell you, one of the ways to get it is focus on him. Isaiah 26, 3. That will keep him in what? Perfect peace. It is perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. I love that. Trust in the Lord Jehovah, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Yeah. You believe that? Yeah, favorite verses in the Bible. One of my favorite, favorite verses right now is Nahum, N-A-H-U-M, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, the Lord is good. A very present help in the time of trouble, and he knows those that are trusting him. Isn't that cool? The, I built my house up in the mountains of North Carolina, and they made a road, and they named the road Nahum. Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7. Nahum means the one that brings consolation. He was a predecessor, actually, of Jonah. Well, anyway. <sighs> That's good. Jesus, are they doing okay, or what do you think? (laughs) You're going to have to get some new brakes. You keep stopping like that. (laughs) No, that was was fun. I love this. The Lord is really putting anointing upon the arts. For for years, the Lord would come to me and said, I'm going to bring a renaissance to the arts. And it didn't excite me. I'm going to bring a renaissance to the arts. I would say it, but I wasn't sold on it myself. You know what I mean? So the Lord came to me and said, you know why you're not excited about that? I said, no, I just know I'm not. (laughs) And then he said, you're not excited because you don't understand Renaissance. I thought Renaissance was the dusting off of something old and antiquated. It's not. It's the birthing of something bright and brand new. So God's about to bring something bright and brand new to the arts. Dancing and painting and everything. The whole artistic realm. Yeah. That's true. I was just in Anaheim, California last week. I'm telling you, some of the 
these, this new breed of radical, gifted people. It's amazing. I'm telling you, it's, a, it's something. There are all different kind of methods of presenting the gospel. We should never change our message, but adopt different methods. Yeah. It's true. Wasn't it Einstein said the quickest way to spot insanity was doing the same process, expecting a different results? Church! Listen, well, you know, isn't it a dumb thing to build a church and expect lost people to come? Why would they? See, the church is for the saints to get built up, filled up, built up, and sent out. It's not for lost people are not going to habitually come to church. That's like building an aquarium and going, where's the fish? <laughs> we got to go get them, hadn't we? Say yes. There's all kind of stuff around here. I've got my water bottle, I think, over here. <sighs> Thanks. Yeah, this this will work. <sighs> what you been up to? Yes, ma'am. See, if I'm real prophetic, I'd know. Working hard? Eh, let me help you there. The first words out of the mouth of God recorded in the Bible is what? It's the English word L-E-T. Let. Religion that always make. See, we've got to learn to quit striving, quit struggling, and just let him do it. There's a gal in the Bible named Mary, not Mary the mother of Jesus, but when Mary, she had a sister named Martha. Jesus showed up at their house. Jesus! He showed up at their house. Martha goes nuts, runs in the kitchen, cooking some cabbage or something. A bagel or I don't know what she was cooking. Doing something for Jesus. And she comes to the kitchen door. There's more burning than what's on the oven. She's mad as she can be. She says to Jesus, What? Don't you understand? She's left me to do all this. And he goes, Martha, Martha, you're busy about a whole bunch of stuff, but Mary has chosen that one thing that's most needful. What was it? Oh, to sit at his feet and drink in his words. So that's the best thing to do is just kind of kick back a little. Do that Psalms 46, 10 and 11. Be still and know that he's God. Well, I got a lot to do. Well, slow down. Be still and know that I'm God. Is there any benefit to knowing God? Daniel eleven thirty two 32b. Daniel eleven thirty two 32b said, But the people that do know their God will display strength and take action. So that's why the devil doesn't want you to know God because he doesn't want you to display strength and take action. He wants you to be neutralized, blase, or real busy doing religious stuff. Oh, boy, I don't like busy religious stuff, do you? I tell you, I believe the Lord's trying to lure us out so He can talk to us. Lure us out away from all the business. I think that's what Michael was talking about when he came out of the city to come to the country and the Lord met him. Have you studied the wilderness? Whoa, it seems like wilderness is a place of promotion. Seems like it to me. Well, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible. Yeah. You doing well? Me too. You're afraid to answer now. Afraid y'all come off with some <laughs> big long thing. This week I'm going to uh, Calgary when we leave here. Calgary, that's kind of sort of like Texas, eh? <laughs> sort of like Texas. Isn't it? I was shocked the first time I ever went. I went to Calgary a long, long time ago. Good gracious. Then I went up to uh, Lake, Lake Louise. I was there with Billy Graham doing a school of evangelism. Can you believe that? That's the honest to God truth. One time I was talking to Dr. Graham. We were in an airplane flying from Russia down to Vienna, 33,000 feet in the air. And I was talking to Dr. Graham about soul winning and evangelism. And I said to him, God is going to use supernatural signs and wonders to bring in an end time harvest. And he said, he put his hand on my shoulder. He said, son, I believe every word of that. Then he said something. He said, let me tell you about harvest time. I was reared on a farm. One thing I know about harvest time, it's short. 
I'm telling you, it's short. The Bible said we need to work while it's day for the night comes when nobody's going to work anymore. We've got to learn to redeem the time because the days are very wicked. That translation says snatch up every opportunity. Ephesians 5, 14 and 15. Buy up every opportunity. See, we don't have the luxury of another 40 years around the mountain, do we? We've got to walk with goal, aim, and purpose. That's what it says. Well, we're getting ready to go. What do you do? Tell me about it. This guy right here, what do you do? You're an excavator? You dig up stuff? Oh, good. Are you? You ever dig up anything this important? Oh, yeah, that's good. There's a lot of stuff. There's treasure hidden in there. Do you believe that? Yeah. Treasure. It's true. It's a heartbeat, sort of. We're one of those away from eternity. Ooh, just one of those. We better seek the Lord while He may be found. We better call upon Him while He's near. No need to call when this quiz. You make your choice now. Lord, tell me, many people think it's chance, not choice. Well, you know, whatever happens, happens. No. There was two trees in the garden. There's two mountains, blessings and curses. Two roads, straight and narrow. It's all about choice. Nothing about chance. Got to make the right choice. What choice have you made? Have you given your life to Jesus fully? It's one thing. It's one thing to be saved. It's another thing to be sanctified. And serving. It's true. Well, I'll tell you, I'm not, all I want to do is just go to heaven. Eh, if that's your attitude, I doubt if you really got saved. <laughs> Might have got scared. You get saved, you get a whole new set of want tos. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any person be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things become bright, brand new. Wonderful. Exhilarating. You believe that? Yeah. Yes, sir. You're doing good. It's really good. That's true. I can see your heart. I mean, this the heart. Both of them. The one that does that, and then the one that really, really where Jesus lives. Aren't you glad that he's looking for a home? Yes. That's true. What do you do, this girl right here? An artist? That's right. I remember that. Yeah. You still painting? God bless your heart. I do stick figures, sort of. Yeah, it's true. I doodle and, and people use the prophetic doodlings and write things out of them. Honest to God, I'll just kind of doodle and I can doodle what's going to happen in advance while we're in prophetic conference. It's true. <laughs> what do you do? A lot of things. A lot of things? Oh, man. Yeah. Tell me a couple of them. Oh, well, I'm an ordained minister. That's a good thing. Here. That's a good thing. We don't marry people in bars. Oh, yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> One time one of my friends went to the penitentiary and he got out of the penitentiary. I was pastoring. So he's finding the first bar fly he could find. He brings to my house about 3 o'clock in the morning. He's drunk and a skunk. He goes, I want you to marry me. I said, I'm not marrying you. Two days later he sobered up and said, thank God. You know. <laughs> Honest to God. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Thomas Earl, bless his heart. You like prophesying, don't you? God likes it when you prophesy. All of us are supposed to prophesy. That's what it says in the Bible. It says your sons and your daughters, you'll fit in one of those categories, shall prophesy. You're a prophetic generation, you believe that? In the last days, he'll pour out of his spirit. Have you ever noticed how everything ties together in the Bible? Joel prophesied it in Joel, and then Peter comes along and amplifies it. See, Joel didn't say a thing about the last days. Peter did. When he's quoting Joel. In the last days, God will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. So in the last days, something jumps out. Get on it. Quick. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. What do you do? 
Carpenter. Carpenter. Jesus was one. That's true. Are you a good carpenter? I bet you are. I bet you are. A carpenter the other day says, you always measure twice and cut once. That's a pretty good thing, isn't it? Measure twice and cut once. Church is still going, well, well, you know. Uh, they're not even going by the rule book, are they? They're just cutting, you know. Uh, can I tell you about a carpenter? I was off in uh, Ohio, and I'm signing books at the book table, and a woman's there, and I look out of my corner of my eye, and I see a big bandage on a guy's hand. So I looked up at him, I said, I said to him, listen, yeah, that's what I'm fixing to tell a story about. And so he must have said, he must have thought, I said, what do you do? Because I asked him, what happened to you? And he thought I said, what do you do? And he said, well, I'm a carpenter and a cabinet builder, but apparently not a very good one. I, he cut his finger off with the saw. Now watch this. This just happened. And here's what he said. He said, cut my finger off. And his wife said, yes, I'm a nurse. I'm the one that round, wound it up, cut this one off. So I was joking. I said to him, you know, God's got original part. Guess what happened? I'll get away from the same words. Quit popping. He goes home. He says to his wife, Honey, something's wrong with my hand. She thought, Oh my, I must have wound it too tight. Took the bandage off and God had given him a finger. Yeah. Now, that's something, isn't it? See if he did it for that guy, he can do it for you. Honest to God. That was over there in uh, Ohio. Ohio. That's right. Isn't that something? The, the wife said, now I'm not a kook. That's what she said. She said, I'm a nurse. I'm the one that wound us. Isn't that something? Do you believe God can do stuff like that? We've watched Him raise the dead. He can do anything. If He did it once, He can do it now. Amen. Hebrews 13.8 He's the same yesterday, this day, and forever. You believe that? You believe in promotion? Yeah, God wants to give you a promotion. That's true. That's a good thing. You, believe, you know what the Lord told me the other day? He said, prepare my people to go to the next new level. Prepare my people to go to the next new level. He actually said, prepare me a remnant. And I said to him, God, I don't like the word remnant. And he said, oh Bobby, all are called, few is going to come. So we need to pursue the Lord to go to a new level. You believe that? Amen. You believe there's always a higher place to go? Yes. Remember I told you earlier, we're going to be receive a higher wisdom than we've been receiving. And you're going to find this out by 2013. I had a visitation for on the Day of Atonement for 2012. And it, it talked about embracing the awe of God. The holy reverential fear of God in order to receive the wisdom of God. The fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom. So we've got to embrace the awe of God. I've had preachers go, well, I'm not afraid of God. I'm more afraid of God than I am the devil. I know we can call him daddy and all that, but there's another side to God also. I suspect we're way too familiar with a God we barely know. Example. Revelation 1. Revelation 1. Remember John the Revelator? He would lay his head on the chest of Jesus. I suspect he was the closest man to Jesus. But he's about to see him in a whole other dimension. He saw him. You remember that? He said when he saw him, he fell at his feet as though he were dead. The Greek could say because he was. He sees Jesus in a whole other dimension. See, I think you and I are about to find that out ourselves. I like when we, they were singing and praising, Worthy is the Lamb. That's Revelations 5. I wept because this book was sealed. No one was worthy. And a guy says in heaven, What you squalling about? The lion has prevailed. The lamb. See, he was a lamb, but he's a lion right now. We're going to meet him as a lion. It's true. He was a lamb, but he's a lion now. He's a lion of the tribe of Judah and he's prevailed to open the seals. See, the book was closed, Revelations 5. Revelations 10, 1 said it's wide open right now. And God's inviting us to come and eat it and then spew it out across the nations. 
Well, that's true. Okay. What do you think? It's going to be okay, isn't it? Yep. He said, if you're willing, he'll make a way. If you're willing, he'll make a way for you. It's true. I was off in California, a little kid, well, 24-year-old kid danced by me. Money nearly knocked me down. So I said to the preacher, man, I felt money on that kid. He had on little blue jeans, short blue jeans, little tank top. I said, boy, money nearly knocked me down. He said, do you know him? I said, no, I don't know him. He said, interview him. So I called the kid over there. I said, and so he told me a story. He's 24 years old. He had made $24 million that year. He had made a million dollars for every year of his life. I said, how'd this happen? He said, I got a dream. And in the dream, God showed him technology to set up something about computers, and it worked. I said to him, how has this changed your life? He said to me, I still live in the same apartment I did a year ago. Still drive the same car I did a year ago. God gave me this for his kingdom, not mine. That's pretty new, isn't it? I was convicted because I thought, man, I'd have a Harley or a Hummer or something, you know. But that kid was different, wasn't he? Got it in a dream. You believe God's still looking for people that will dream big? Jesus told me one time, I give you my personal permission to attempt to exaggerate what I'm about to do. So I said to him, I'll have to have a verse for that. And he said, no problem, Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. He's got a lot of verses, hasn't he? Well, he is verses. John 1, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld him full of glory. Boy, a lot of luggage under there. Hey, briefcases, all kind of stuff, man. I like the kid back there. Got a kind of a plaid-looking shirt on right here. Yeah, that's you. What's your name? Nathan. Nathan. That's in the Bible. What are you doing, Nathan? What did I do? Yes. I cleaned the hospital. That's a good thing. It'd be good to empty the hospital. <laughs> when John G. Lake moved in, they would empty the hospitals. That's true. I believe that was a prototype of what you and I ought to be walking in the fruit of. I think that was a seed of what you and I ought to be walking in the fruit of. That's true. Everything about the kingdom according to the Bible gets bigger, not littler. Amen. Starts out like a mustard seed gets bigger than a tree. But we're set. I don't know how the church seems to be the only thing that settles for abnormal growth. I mean, you bring a little baby home from the hospital, yeah, put him back there in the back room. 16 years later, still back there at the pacifier. Whoa, something wrong with that kid. <laughs> but church, they give a life to Jesus 16 years later. <laughs> still babes. We need to start demanding maturity. Yes. See, you'll never get that higher wisdom we're talking about if you don't show yourself mature. Yes. Paul said, I've got higher wisdom reserved. For those who will show themselves mature. Higher wisdom. That's what it's, it's in the Bible. I can show it to you. It's true. God, gotcha. Jesus, watch him, man. It's in airwaves or something, isn't it? What do you think? Like that lid. What's your name? Scott. God bless you. I'm Bobby. How old are you? I'm 69. That's true found a verse in the Bible you can live as long as you want to wow. or you can get old swivel up like a pickle <laughs> it's true man you've been doing good God bless you it's true alright don't worry it's okay it's true don't hit that something <laughs> don't wake the baby Joshua Oh boy, I love Joshua 1, 7, 8, and 9. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, Meditate upon the word of God day and night and it will guarantee you good success. So I looked up the word good success. It means overflowing. Oh Joshua, aren't you something? What are you doing? Boy, he's young, isn't he? Two weeks old. I'm a little bit afraid of them when they're that high. I, I want them that can go, Papa, you know. I got four grandkids now. The oldest one is 18. Good Lord. Then his brother is 16. Then we got one that's just about to be six. Then we got our first little girl. She's two. 
she'll call me and sing and sing. I'll understand about three words and then she'll go, she'll go, I love you more. I love you more. Yeah, she's something. Katie Allison. Oh, she's something. She'll say, Papaw's girl. That's Papaw. And Papaw preach. Papaw preach. Boy, you can't beat that. I mean, that's better than president or whatever y'all got. True. It may pop again when I go back. What do you think? See? Working. Yeah. You believe there's all kind of radio frequencies and TV frequencies in this room? You I don't see them. You don't have a receiver hooked up. See, the Holy Ghost is all around you, but you have to have a receiver. You have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. Well, you got it if you believe the Bible. Matthew 13, 16, he says, Blessed are your eyes, for they see. Blessed are your ears, for they hear. It says Matthew 13, 16, Many long to see what you see. Many deeply desire to hear what you hear. But to them it was not permitted. Inferring to us it is. You believe God God will hide some things from us, for us? Yes. Yes. It's Revelations 2, 17. To him that overcomes, I will grant to eat of the hidden manna. Proverbs 25, 1 and 2, he said, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter of the honor of kings to search it out. Yeah. That's true where we got to go. I enjoyed Michael and those guys. Wasn't that something? I enjoyed Jesus and his wayward band there. <laughs> but they finally came around, didn't they? Sister saw the light. Yeah. Don't you love old Carrie Underwood's song? That was wonderful, wasn't it? One American Idol jumped out with that thing. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> That's true. That's better than a lot of them do, isn't it? They get a platform and use it for every opportunity except to glorify the Lamb of God. Uh, to any platform we've got, it should be to glorify Him. Amen. It says in Colossians 1, 13, God extracted us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of light. See, there can't be any transformation until there's a transference. Transferred out of the kingdom of darkness. I'm spitting like a... Just a, Sometimes I forget to wipe and a big old fur ball will come up there. I'll launch them every once in a while. Whoosh! Yeah. yeah. That's true. My wife, she'll go... That means I'm supposed to wipe. Yep. Yep. Bless her heart. I looked down there one time and it looked like she's trying to land a 747. I thought, oop, my zipper must be undone. Guess what it was? A sock was hanging out my pants leg. Static electricity and a sock was hanging my... Yep. But uh, women, bless her heart, she, she really helps. That's right. Well, we've got to go. Adios. Hey, God wants to heal you. Yes. Said in the Bible, He healed them all. Yes. Said in the Bible, when Israel left Egypt, there was not one sick or feeble among them. Theologians, they, they don't know how many millions that was, but a bunch. And there was not one sick or feeble among them. No. Can you imagine that? Way more people than live in Hamilton mm-hmm. or Toronto. Yeah. Hospitals are packed full. But when Israel left Egypt, there was not one sick or feeble among them. And Paul said, what happened to them happened for us. For our learning, for our admonition, in whom the ends of the world have come. So for the Bible to be true, there has to come a time there's no sick people in church. That's true. Is that true? That's what the Bible teaches. It says, Jesus, heal them all. That's right. So he wants to heal you. Now, how does that happen? Well, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, you won't get it. John eleven forty, John chapter 11, verse 40, Jesus said, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see? Skepticism says don't believe it till you see it. Jesus says believe it in order to see it. John eleven forty. is that right? It's in the Bible. In the Bible. It says you'll know the truth. The truth will emancipate you. You believe that? What's your name? 
What do you do, Liz? I'm a nurse. Oh, my. What kind of nurse? All kind of nurses. All the doctors look like kids now. Yeah. I went to have a test and I said, Your mama know you're here? God looked younger than my grandson. That's true. That's what I said to him. Scared him, but it's okay. It's true. You don't look old enough to be a nurse. You're not lying to me, are you? I'm prophetic. (laughs) Ah, those nurses. Yeah. I tell you what, they're a pretty amazing thing to read the doctor's writing. I mean, they write in tongues, man. It's true. Crazy stuff, isn't it? Well, we got to go. It's getting late now. Is that dolphins on you? Yeah. Yeah. Lord visited with me once about flying dolphins. I thought, man. Then I started studying dolphins in the Bible. Said they would wrap the things of the temple in dolphin skin. When they get ready to move it, the instruments of praise, they wrap them in dolphin skin. Look it up. Isn't that something? I don't know what that means, but it means something. Here's a perch. Is that yours? Yours, okay. I guess we better not pilfer it since you're this close. <laughs> you're going to get a song about splendor, okay? Splendor. You'll be wakened by the Lord and He'll be talking to you about singing about His splendor. Okay? You'll like it. <laughs> really true. <laughs> splendor. Radiant splendor. That's what we're all supposed to have. We're supposed to rise and shine for our light has come. And it means the radiant splendor. Isn't that something? We're praying for something that's already here according to Isaiah 60 verses 1 through 8. Arise, shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has. It's true. Good. He says to tell you, you don't need an attorney, you got one. Yeah, You don't need an attorney, you got one. Remember that the Holy Spirit is an advocate. And that's it. So you got an attorney. If you don't need one, you got one. That's good. And he's going to render a good verdict. The Bible says the evil horns ruled and raged against the saints of God until the Ancient of Days stood and dropped his gavel and rendered a verdict in behalf of the saints of God. I believe God's about to render a verdict on our behalf. Don't you? I do. That's in there. I know your gift. It's so winning. True. You got a bright light inside of you. It says those that have been forgiven much love much. And that's the deal. It's true. And God really, really, really has a call on you. Ah, we gotta go. Adios. Ah, kinda. Here we are out in the middle of a cornfields all around us. Isn't this something? I came here once. He's making a movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's some TV people out here. Or, I don't know what kind of movie he's making. They didn't ask me to be a stand-in or anything. (laughs) I thought for sure they'd go. I thought they might have thought I was Brad Pitt or something. (laughs) I think they meant Peach Pitt, you know, instead of... Brad Pitt. Lord, touch him. Anyway, we've got to go. You believe he'll heal you? Yes. The Lord will. Yes. You believe he'll set your mind free? Yes. That's where most of the bondage is right now. As a man thinks, that's the way he's going to live. Amen. says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So I looked up the word indeed. It's a courtroom term. It means irrevocable. Amen. Whom the Son sets free, free indeed, irrevocably free. Amen. Isn't that good? Can't be rescinded. I told you I'd launch one. That's true. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Do you believe every word in the Bible means something? John 14, 12. Barely, barely. Was Jesus just trying to make the page a little longer? What in the world is barely? Oh, it's another courtroom term. If you're going to be a witness, especially in America, before you take the stand, you have to do something. Take an oath. 
Yeah, put your hand on the Bible and say, I most solemnly swear, that's the word Jesus used for verily. Most solemnly, most solemnly, I say to you, what I tell you is truth and trustworthy. And he said it twice. Why? Because what he says is mind-boggling. These works that I do, greater works than these, shall you do. Amen. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, let's read. What do you do with the cap on? What do you do? Uh, restaurant. restaurant. Hey, they open tonight. <laughs> What they got this good? Burgers. Oh man, you can't hardly beat that. Unless it's a chicken sandwich. We stopped at Tim Hortons on the way over here. First time I ever saw a Tim Hortons, I was over there in Stony Plain. And me and the preacher's up about five in the morning going somewhere. Cars were all out in the bar ditch. I said to him, has there been an accident? He said, no, it's Tim Hortons. <laughs> My God, them Canadians was out in the bar ditch parked in the, trying to get into Tim Hortons. Isn't that something? But we was there today, stopped in there and got a sandwich. And they had enough muffins there. Woo! I figured out them muffins is dietetic pornography. That's what it is. Have you noticed how they put them in the trays there? They got some glass there to keep you from drooling on them. That's what it is. Remember Pablo's dogs? Ring the bell, the slob would get to going. I mean, they leave them cookies out there, huh? Then they, then they have the audacity to go, brand! Like it's going to be healthy for you. About this much brand, about a half a sack of sugar, you know. Ah, well, anyway. That was fun, though, wasn't it? We had fun. Well, we've got to get at it. Hey, I want you to start enjoying Jesus. Amen. Really? I tell people if they don't enjoy Jesus, heaven will be hell for them. Think about it. Start enjoying Jesus. What's the benefit of enjoying Jesus? In His presence is fullness of joy. At His right hand are pleasures forevermore. That's how you get well, get around His presence. A merry heart does good like a... That's right. You know, you encourage people and your encouraging words can heal their body. That's what it says in the Bible. It says there's those that speak and it's like the slashing of a sword. And then there's those that speak and their words are like apples of gold and settings of silver. And it says their pleasant words are pleasant to the mind and healing to the body. That's what it says. Well, i got to go. Adios! How do you say bye in Canadian? You got any Canadian? What's the French? The, the French speaking over there? Off wall! Salut! By what? Salut! Salut! Is that by in French? Oh, is it? I like that. Salute. I like French. Every time I hear French, I want to go, yeah, and put whipped cream on it, you know. <laughs> different, different countries talk different ways. Germany, it sounds like they're always men. I saw false I mean, man, you go, ooh, you know. That's right. That's right. But French always it goes, I fum I mean, it sounds like a dessert or something, you know. I mean, they can be cussing you out, and it sounds pretty good, you know. French. I'll tell you what I speak. I went to England, had to have an interpreter. I went to London, England, had to have... I'll tell you what, I speak Texican. It's true. I'll tell you what, though, God speaks just like me. I'm serious about it. He speaks just like me. Yep. I'll tell you how He speaks. He speaks exactly like you listen. Yeah. John 10, 3, my sheep will hear my voice and they will follow me. John 10, 27, it says, they'll flee another voice. It says, the voice of the Lord God came walking in the cool of the day. Don't you want that back? Adam forfeited it, but we can get it back. It's true. Ah, the voice of the Lord. It says, his voice thunders, shakes down the trees. His voice. 
I was asked the question today, how can I intensify my hearing? Here's the best way to amplify what God is saying, intimacy. Yes. Nothing improves hearing like getting close. Yeah. My wife and I have been married going on 49 years. If she calls me and I go, who? Whoa. I should know whether she's happy, sad, excited just by the fragrance of her voice. Don't you like? I'll tell you, it's just wonderful. I want ears to hear him, don't you? Hey, go to the book table and buy everything. I tell you what, I've been, the Lord Jesus came to him and said, I want you to sign books. I said, I don't sign books. He said, you do now. (laughs) Honest to God. So I told my wife, I said, we're going to have a book signing. She said, I didn't know we signed books. I said, we do now. I'll tell you what happened at the first book signing. You want to know? Honest to God, truth. A woman walks up. She bought a book. I said, I knew my name, so I signed it. And I said to her, I said, what's your name? She said, Donna. I said, D-O-N-N-A. And she said, that's right. And I wrote her name as soon as I finished her name. A verse, a Bible verse just kind of went like that across my spirit. So I thought, okay. And I wrote this verse down. As I wrote it, she starts hyperventilating. She starts gasping. And she's almost screaming, that's the verse. That's the verse my mother used to teach me and train me. That has happened hundreds of times at the book table. It's the strangest thing. But I hope you'll go to the book table and get everything. It'll help you. Here's one tells all. It's, this is a DVD. Somebody asked me, they said, do you sing on your CDs? I said, listen, I don't believe the church goes that deep into tribulation. No, I just teach on the CDs. But this is a DVD. It tells my whole life story. It tells about my mom trying to abort me. It tells about the hand of Jesus coming, pushing me aside. It tells about a visitation I had when I was five. It tells about the devil speaking to me, about a demon coming into me. It tells about the devil trying to destroy my life. It tells about me getting converted in the fall of 68. Called to preach in 69. So I hope that you'll get this. It's called Call from Birth. So it's a DVD. And there's other stuff here. You'll, you'll get them. You'll find out. Oh, uh, here's one. These are five CD set on how to walk in the anointing. I taught at a place for hours and days and they took it and condensed it down into a, a set of five CDs and uh, uh, boy I'll tell you what it'll really really help you isn't it amazing that you can benefit I've been preaching 44 years and you can get this and listen and yeah. catch up a whole bunch mm-hmm. isn't that something you really can well there's stuff there this was Dread Champions have you seen that yeah. the Lord said study the Hebrew names of the men that assembled themselves around David and you find out the character and the conduct he wants his end time people to operate in one of them was worth a thousand, it says. That's what it says in the Bible. They were the, they were the sons of Gath. Their number, one, their number one attribute was they would get on the enemy and they wouldn't quit till they fin- finished their mission. Wouldn't that be good for us? Yeah. I think so. Did I give you this one? You'll read it, won't you? God bless your heart. Okay, anyway, anything else? Hey, I want to pray for you, okay? Oh, I'm throwing stuff around. Here's what I want to pray. I want to pray Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, that the eyes of your heart will be flooded with revelatory light. You'll have a grasp and a comprehension of the ways of God. I want to pray for you, Psalms 119, verse 130. The entrance of His Word will give light. God doesn't want a stumbling in the dark. He wants leaping in the light. Lord, you said walk in the light as you're in the light. I release light for these people. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you will help us to step in the light. I pray over every one of us, Psalms 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. Lord, I ask right now that you will do that in Matthew 13, 16. You will open our eyes and our ears to hear and behold wonderful things in Jesus' name. Here's my prayer for you too. 2 Kings 6, 17. O oh Lord, open their eyes that they may see. See, now I'm not talking about physical sight here. I'm talking about seeing into the realm of the Spirit. Lord Jesus, open their eyes that they may see. Open our heart that we may respond. Save every lost person that's in this room. Those that watch by internet, Lord. Heal every hurting heart. I pray you'll fix your people in the most wonderful, dramatic way. Take us from where we are. Carry us to where we need to be. Transform us 
And we do want this transformation from glory to glory to glory. There's a verse in the Bible that said, If you've got a rock, he'll give you iron. If you have iron, he'll give you brass. If you've got brass, he'll give you silver. If you've got silver, he'll give you gold. See, there's always something bigger than what we're in. Lord, we thank you for upgrade. We want to go from glory unto glory. I pray over these people. 2 Corinthians 3.18 As we behold him with an unveiled face, we're changed from glory unto glory. Glory unto glory. Even by the presence of the Lord. I want that. I pray as we go home, you'll go with us. Aren't you glad? Yep. I know there's an anointing here, but you don't leave Jesus in this room. He goes with you. I'll tell you how close he is with you, as close as you skin. It's Christ in you, the assurance of glory. It's true. Jesus, you're wonderful. I want to be just like you. That's the ultimate plan of God, to make us just like his son. It's true. His son is exactly, precisely like him. That's Colossians 1.15. Christ is the express image of the invisible God. Well, we've got to go. Adios, amigos. Au revoir. What is that? Do, who's, who speaks? What is au revoir? What is it? Oh, see, I've been trying to say that. Y'all thought I was saying Bob War. You know, that's Texas. Au war. Over war. How is it? Well, adios. Get, get back. When's the next service? Tomorrow night at 7 with me. Well, we could have. Where's the books? I don't know. We can Lord have a book signing. Is it over there? Let's have one. We can go there if we want to. Who's dismissing us? Oh, wow. Hallelujah. Wow.